welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. The English Premier League is where we begin today. Following four rounds of fixtures, this is how the table reads. Arsenal at the top of the table, having played four matches, they've won four, a total of 12 points. Manchester City, they sit in second position, two points separate them from uh, league leaders, Arsenal. Tottenham in third with 10 points also, and Brighton in fourth position, having won three of their matches, a total of 10 points. Then we have Manchester United in eight, they have six, Liverpool in ninth spot, a total of five points. And Brentford, let's take a look now at the bottom of the table. Everton in 18th position, two points, uh, no wins just yet. Wolves also in 19th position with two points and Leicester City at the bottom of the table with one point. Well, our European football correspondent Simon Evans joins us now. Simon was at the Etihad Stadium on Saturday, so we'll start the discussion on the champions. Welcome, Simon. Hi, good to see you again. All right, so starting with Manchester City, Erling Haaland is living up to his reputation. His 19-minute hat-trick inspiring Manchester City to come from two goals down at <coughs> halftime to beat a spirited Crystal Palace side. Uh, Haaland not disappointing. No, not at all. I mean, it's funny how people at the start of the season were saying, oh, will Manchester City be able to adjust to playing with this big number nine? Will he be able to adjust to Manchester City's way of playing? And he scored six goals in his opening four games in the Premier League. Incredible start, really. City were struggling because Palace play a really, really smart counter-attacking game. They beat City 2-0 at the Etihad last season, of course. People will remember as well a few years ago, Andros Townsend scoring there when they went and won under Roy Hodgson. So they've been a bit of a bogey team for Manchester City, but they came back from that two-goal deficit and, and, and really roared back in style with Haaland leading the way in the second half. Yeah, you speak about City, you know, having to come back from two down. And Simon, what I've noticed this season is, you know, City are getting the wins, but it isn't as easy as they would have won matches before. Many a times they are in a position now where they have to bounce back. Why is City making these wins so difficult on themselves? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think traditionally under Guardiola, City have started slowly most seasons. Um, I think the way they play and the, the need they have for the rhythm and repetition in their passing game and so on does, does sort of lend itself to slow starts. Yeah. But that point you highlight there about going behind, the last two games of last season, um, they, they had to come back. Um, it was West Ham United was one of those games where they came back to win from two goals down when it seemed like they'd given Liverpool a glimmer of hope. So they have been a bit sloppy of late, uh, of City, and it's hard to put your finger on exactly why that is. Um, and it's something that I'm sure Guardiola will have to uh, work out because they can't go through the whole season having to have so many comebacks. Yes, yeah, Simon, your early season report card on Horland. Uh, still a lot of football left to be played, but 6'3", almost 200 pounds, scores with both feet, scores with his, with his head, looking, looking unstoppable. Yeah, he's an incredible player. I mean, we knew what we were going to get after what we'd seen of him in the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund, of course. And he averaged a goal of game everywhere he's been, uh, in Salzburg, in Dortmund, uh, before that in Norway and with the Norwegian national team. He's around a goal a game, and he's better than that at the moment in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? One thing about him, I think, with him being a big number nine, I see some of the papers in England are talking about him being like an alien. He's so different to everything that we see around because he is so, such, such a big, strong physical presence as well as being technically gifted. I think this is coming back in. I think the number nines are back. If you look at Liverpool with Darwin Nunes, he's a, he's a proper number nine there as well. And I think we're starting to to see the return of, of not, not the old target man, but a yeah. newer version of it. Yeah, and, and the fact is, with Man City's roster so super man for man, and they have a, a, a goal scorer with his acumen, it's going to take a tough team to deny them the title again. It is, it is. And you see a game like that where they could have gone 3-0 down against Crystal Palace. And yet you still feel when you sat there in the ground, there's no panic amongst the supporters. The journalists there are like, OK, well, we'll see what happens, but they'll probably come back in the second half. And you do, you do just feel they have that 
ability to, even when they get themselves in a bit of a mess in the Premier League, not in the Champions League, they've, they've got themselves in messes they haven't been able to get out of in Europe, but in the Premier League, they do seem to be able to come back. I think barring some injuries, they're, they're the clear favourites again this season, barring some, some big injuries to big players. Yeah, and, and before we leave that Man City Crystal Palace game, I know I asked you last season, Simon, about uh, Patrick Vieira and his coaching acumen. Uh, you know, when you're ranking and sort of assessing the performance of these coaches, you have to think about the rosters they have because uh, Vieira is doing a job here with Crystal Palace with tools that are not similar to Pep Guardiola's tools and, you know, some other, uh, Tuchel's tools. Um, how well do you think he's fitting in, in an atmosphere where some, some former players are, are struggling as managers? Well, indeed, yeah. If you compare how Patrick Vieira is doing compared to, you know, I think what you're intimating there is <laughs> obviously Steven Gerrard and Frank <laughs> Lampard not doing so well in their respective jobs. I think Vieira has done an excellent job. I mean, last season, a lot of people, myself included, thought he might have bitten off a little bit more than he could chew by coming into Palace and needing to rebuild a side that was in the bottom half of the Premier League. Very difficult task to do. Did that without any real danger of relegation last season. And then this year, I think, I think that they've grown on that. They've got a, a, a multinational squad, which can be difficult to gel together. They play in a very similar style. Even when Zaha was out of the team against City, he didn't play. But they, they moved Eze into that role, who looks an exciting player. They've got options, but they've got a system of play. And he's an impressive character. You know, he's a very, very calm. He was, he was, he was quite an aggressive player, wasn't he, Patrick Vieira? But he, has, he exudes this sort of calm and authority over his team. I've been hugely impressed with him. Right, and we're moving along now, Simon, and Roberto Firmino answered his recent critics in style with two goals and three assists in Liverpool's 9-0 trashing of Bournemouth. Firmino and the Reds, they needed that performance following their dreadful start to the season. But 9-0? Nine, nine <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a terrible one for Bournemouth, that, I mean... It is. I think when you get a score line that it's, you know, we can we can talk about how wonderful Liverpool are, but usually the story there is the opposition not being up to scratch. And I think Scott Parker, the Bournemouth manager after the game, very diplomatically said that I've got a good group here, but I think they need some help, um, which is a very diplomatic way of saying I need some new defenders because uh, they really struggled. They struggled throughout, actually, not just the back four, the midfield weren't picking up men. Um, they looked like a, a championship side uh, up against a Champions League side and uh, and it was a tough day for them. The amazing thing for me with that, that scoreline as well is 9-0 and Mohamed Salah didn't find the score sheet. Yeah, that was actually going to be my follow-up question to you. Mo Salah, you know, seemed to be struggling. I've been hearing people saying that maybe, you know, he's missing Sadio Mane and the effect that he would have had the way they played together. What's your take on that, you know, criticism? No, I think it's, it's very early in the season and, and we've had this before with Mohamed Salah where people have questioned him after a, a little barren spell or a little spell of of form and he comes back and he scores 20 odd goals a season you know he, he, you look at his average that he's produced since he's gone to gone to liverpool and he's he's consistently around that 20 goal a season mark which is top pass in in any side um i think they are adjusting to life after marnie a little bit but nine nil suggests they're adjusting pretty well and they did that of course without darwin nunez their new signing and um you know you, you look at the players Diaz was, was particularly electric on Saturday, Luis Diaz. Um, they've got what it takes up front. I, I think, you know, I'd still put this performance aside and, and let's see how they do in their next game against one of the top teams because there were some worrying signs against United in that defeat that, that some things at Liverpool may not quite be uh, right and that Klopp might have a bit of adjusting to do. Yeah, but you said it earlier on as well, Simon, that it's still early season. You don't want to read too much... Uh, by what we are seeing now. Just a week ago, we were discussing Liverpool here, and our take was that it, you know, it's, it's still a pretty early season. If you look at the bottom of the table, the, two, the three relegation teams at the moment are two teams that were top 10 last year, Leicester City and, and Wolves, 8th and 10th last year, and they're in the relegation zone at the moment. Um, but there's still a lot of football left to be played. So Liverpool fans can take heart in the fact that there is enough time for Klopp to get his pieces together 
and uh, challenge as best as they can for the title. And I think they will challenge. I mean, they haven't become a bad team just because they lost to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. There were some aspects of that performance that were surprising, you know, the lack of energy and yes. so on. There was, there was, and Van Dijk's form. There were a few things there that were raising question marks that I don't think a 9-0 against Bournemouth completely answers. But yeah, league tables at this stage of the season, we all look at them, we like to talk about them and, 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 and compare stats and so on. It's a completely natural way to react. But it's a very, very small sample size, isn't it? Four games. Yeah, definitely. Four games, we have so much more to look forward to. Now, Raheem Sterling finally got the Chel under Chelsea score sheet, netting twice in a 2-1 win over Leicester. Simon, 10-man Chelsea showed character. Yes, they did. And, uh, you know, Sterling popping up in that position of the back post again um, and was lively throughout that game. Um, looks like he's settling in well at Chelsea. Could turn out to be a really good signing for them. Um, I think they're still looking to do one or two more things in, in the transfer window before it closes on Thursday night here. Um, but yeah, good to see Sterling uh, with his slightly new haircut, um, but, but still looking like the player who Gareth Southgate hopes will be in top form by the World Cup in November. Yeah, another thing that has been on my mind, you know, Chelsea, of course, the players following in the footsteps of Thomas Tuchel because that red card from Conor Gallagher, you know, we would think that Chelsea would try to avoid losing their players knowing what had happened to their manager. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that last week, didn't we, about whether yeah. there was a sort of discipline problem a little bit at Chelsea and, and it was really silly what he did with a yellow card already mm -hmm. uh, and so early in the game as well. And a player who I know he's fired up. He'd been out on loan at Crystal Palace last year, Conor Gallagher, and done really well there. And then Chelsea brought him back. He finally gets his chance in midfield. So he wants to go out and really impress and does the opposite, really. Leaves his side with 10 men. And they managed to pull it off against the Leicester side that have got some troubles at the moment. You know, they don't, things don't seem quite right there. Um, they've been a little bit destabilised by the transfer market. But yeah, Gallagher is a player who impressed a lot of people last year. Me included, a uh, very lively player, very inventive, but he was, uh, he was silly this yeah. weekend. Yeah, and that aside, how impressed are you with Rhys James' performance this season? I mean, it's four games, we said that, but still. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I think he's, he's going to cause some problems for Southgate when he has to decide who's going to play right back <laughs> for England because um, England have a number of good options at right back and, and he's definitely one of them. Uh, he's so good going forward, so strong. But I do think he has improved the defensive side of his game. But you've got Kyle Walker and Trent Alexander-Arnold as well and Kieran Trippier. You know, they, there's an abundance of, of options there. But he might be the one. He might be the one because he's just so dynamic. He gets up and down the line so well and so relentlessly for 90 minutes. I think he's a fantastic player. Yeah, definitely fantastic play. And speaking of fantastic, Arsenal, they maintained their perfect start to the season following a come-from-behind win over Fulham at the Emirates. Arsenal, to the surprise of some, are the early league leaders. Can they keep this up? Probably not, no. Uh, but I think they've definitely improved. And uh, I think there are, it wasn't, look, this wasn't a great performance from Arsenal at the weekend. Um, a little bit of a, of a dull game compared to some of their games earlier on this season. But I, I think that things have really come together well for Arteta. Um, and I think the signings they've made in the summer, uh, particularly Gabriel Jesus, has, has brought to life the players around him. They've got a lot of attacking options. Odegaard has, has been great in midfield. So, yeah, it's starting to really look like a team is Arsenal. They're going, to be, they're going to be competing top four. There's no doubt about that. I do think it's probably still a season or two early for them to be going for the title, but you never know. Yeah. You know, part of my preparation for this show, apart from just looking at the matches, I like to listen to what other analysts have to say and just people that know the sport. And one of the theory or discussion that's being thrown around is that, you know, Arsenal is doing well and, of course, winning because they haven't played any tough opponent just yet. Where do you sit in that discussion? Well, yeah, I mean, um, they've got a, an interesting trip coming up uh, next week to uh, at the weekend to Manchester United, which I think is going to be a test for them, definitely. They, they, 
it's true that the fixtures haven't given them that big test. They, they haven't come up against uh, City or Liverpool or Spurs or Chelsea. But that, that'll be an interesting test for them at United, um, especially with United starting to look a little bit more like a team. Um, and we'll see. We'll see with Arsenal because we have seen this before. You know, that's the big sort of caveat you have to put against this discussion <laughs> that Arsenal are improving. We've yeah. seen them improve before, including under Unai Emery. And then when they've come up to that game at Anfield against Liverpool or against City, uh, then, then they've collapsed. So let's see if that steal that we've been talking about that's been missing, if that really is there when it comes to the crunch games. Right. Well, the Premier League continues on Tuesday and these are the fixtures down to be contested. Let's take a look. Crystal Palace up against Brentford, Fulham at home to Brighton, Southampton at home to Chelsea. Leeds play Everton, Arsenal right now at the top of the table, they play Aston Villa, Bournemouth will be seeing Wolves, Manchester City the defending champions up against Not Nottingham, West Ham having got their first win would want to try to keep it up against Tottenham, Liverpool versus Newcastle and Leicester up against Manchester United. So Simon, you know, um, looking at the fixtures, do you want to make a prediction just for the top matches? Maybe Manchester United, can Liverpool keep up their win? What, what say you? Yeah, I think there's, there's some interesting ones there. And I think, uh, you know, I think City against Nottingham Forest. Um, Forest were a bit unlucky at the weekend against Tottenham. Um, you know, Harry Kane uh, showed his quality with his finishing. Um, but I think Forest uh, will upset a few teams this season when they come together. They've had a lot of new players brought in, so it'll be interesting to see how they cope going to Manchester City. It's a really tough one, though, for managers when they bring a team up from the Championship like Steve Cooper's done with Nottingham Forest, and then you've got to go to play Guardiola's City at the Etihad. So that's one to keep an eye out on. And Everton leads, you know, that's also an interesting one. Two teams that were down in near the relegation zone last time and we'll see uh, there's a feeling that Everton might be again but the leads have improved we'll see if that uh, theory uh, stands up uh, this week yeah um, Southampton were pretty stout Simon against Manu over the weekend um, they've got Chelsea on Tuesday how do you see that one sort of game Chelsea's slipped up in isn't it over the last couple of years that kind of fixture you know where you, you, you look at it and think um uh, you know, they should on paper Chelsea should win that. On on paper, Southampton look like a team who might struggle this season. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. You know, it's good to see Shea Adams, uh, who, who who they bought for quite big money a couple of years ago, who's not really fired on all cylinders for them. He's made a really strong start to this season, so he'll be uh, one to, to for Chelsea's defence to keep an eye on for sure. Well, Simon, I want to thank you so much. Of course, we have a lot more football to talk and we'll be looking forward to seeing you a lot more on the Sports Mac Zone. Thank you. Look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Simon Evans there, our European football correspondent. We take a quick, quick break and we come right back.